So I'm talking about um, a chess program I wrote 21 years ago. Um, and I've been working on <coughs> like every decade, um, every few years I do some work on it. Um, now, so, okay, the first release was 19 years ago. Um, I started on it um, around the year 2000 um, and entered it in a, in a 5K web page competition. So the entire web page was 5K and it was very popular there and it kind of um, didn't win the prize but it was a, you know, a people's choice kind of thing. It ran on Netscape 4. I thought it ran on Netscape 3 until this week and I, and I tested it and it doesn't. <laughs> um, and I think it ran on um, MSIE 3. Um, but I can't test that. And I called it public domain and I gave it a SourceForge page. I called it public domain because... Um, all the licenses I can think of at, th at that time, they either needed you to put a huge license text on, or they all did, which would put it over 5k, or, um, you know, even the MIT one, um, or or um, there was this kind of thing about the the source code um, and its modifi <laughs> modif preferred form for modifying modification, whatever, that's the GPL talked about that kind of stuff, and I didn't actually have a preferred form for modifying it because uh, I'll show you there's a little bit of it so anyway this is what it looks this is um, like okay to run a almost contemporary browser I ran this in wine um, I turned off Wi-Fi before starting up an old browser even in wine and this is kind of what it looked like if you go to the same um, page now it doesn't um, the modern browsers have decided that, um, that these these images, the GIFs, that they should be blurry around the edges instead of rectangular, so it doesn't really look the same, but it works the same. Um, and the, then I also made a version that was um, 6K, that's the only way you can tell, except uh, you can choose, so in the other one, 5K one, you can choose whether you're having a queen or a rook. If you know, if you know chess, you know what I'm talking about, if you don't, never mind. But if you get your pawn to the other end, you can choose what you're going to have as you, the pawn turns into a new thing. Um, and you can usually you choose a queen, but you can you might want a knight or something. Um, and and the and the you can also choose the level that you're playing at on the six K one. And um, I've somebody wrote to me and told me that the middling level is about a thousand on the um, chess ranking whatever things. Which is not very good. I mean, I know it's not very good, um, but it, it, it'll, offer, it'll beat m probably all of you. I don't know. No. Yeah, yeah. It'll beat it'll, be, it'll be most people though, because most people are bad, and also because when you're playing a, you know, five k chess web page, you don't you don't think you don't really think ahead. You just go um, charging around, and you you know you, you've got a good plan, but you don't notice there's a bishop up there and you you put your queen in the wrong place and it's all over. Um, and it's got an undo button. So so that that means that you, you actually can do better than that. Um, just keep just keep keep banging undo on that one. Um, and but but then if you put it in the the slow mode you get this pop up which I'm sure everyone remembers saying that sometimes. Um, so then, and it, and it kind of looks like this. Um, and that is, that's how I wrote it. Um, I wasn't really a programmer in those days, but um, I, I was aiming for the, the 5K limit. Actually, the earlier versions were more expanded and then um, I kind of crunched it down by hand um, and so this is the this is what I ended up with you know after m my, my work 
and there's no, uh, I didn't use, um, see, no, that's not the whole thing. That's the like snippet. Um, um, I didn't use CVS or anything. But anyway, I, in the when I released it, well, there was one. There's one bug, um, and it would the effect for the bug it was it would, it would look like the um, web page was having a tantrum when 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 you e either you put it in checkmate, it would sometimes just take your queen, even though your queen was protected. Or you know, it would do it would do, it would do one last little thing like oh, gotcha, and <coughs> people it really made people mad. Um, like, the, 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 I've, I looked at this one that they linked to. Um, it's still, still there, still broken, because people installed the, the 2002 version, and then they just kind of they just keep going on and on about it. Even like like a couple of years ago, it's the last one I could find that I got. But so every year I get a few emails. Most of them are quite mean <laughs> about my about a bug in a. 15 year old um, website so that that wasn't even my it wasn't my copy of it it was that somebody because it's public domain people copied it all around the all around the internet so and then in, in 2012 I thought well I'll fix this but to fix it I needed to expand out my my code and and I kind of modernized the public domain to CC0 which is kind of like the same thing but um, has legal meaning in more places and and I moved it to GitHub because um, um, if I wanted people to notice it being on SourceForge, I don't, maybe you don't remember SourceForge. It was like CVS Hub, um, and it's still there. Um, and and I've still got the thing on on SourceForge. It's kind of I push it to both both places. I did a Pearlmonger's talk. Do you remember that? That's a, and. Um, I fixed that bug, um, and then uh, I separated the user interface, which you saw before, from the the engine. Kind of, and I made it kind of like an API for the engine. So that, and I left the user interface really stupid and bad, because I thought people who wanted to to make their own chess page, if they wanted to use you know somebody else's stuff, they wouldn't want to use somebody's user interface and make their own engine. They want it the other way around. So everyone would, um, you know, if you want to make a 3D chess thing, you don't want to have to think about chess. But actually nobody, as far as I can tell, nobody cares about um, making new new interfaces. They just use the same one or they change the images. Um, and I've made a kind of API and it talks um, this thing, what's it called? Forsyth? Edwards notation, uh, which is like a standard thing for handing around chess games. And I made it faster and faster, but um, it just kind of works the same. And it got, um, I made it faster in two ways. One of the ways is I waited 10 years, and the browsers got a thousand times faster. And the other way is I, I kind of optimized it a bit. Um, so if in 2012, you, you had um, typed arrays turning up, where you, which is a kind of a JavaScript array where it's not like in, a, in a, a JavaScript list you have you can have any old thing in the list, and in a typed array if you're having integers you only have integers, and um, of a certain size. Um, actually, in 2012 there weren't much, there wasn't much speed advantage in that, but it, since then it's kind of become better and better. Um, and it's still supported Explorer 5.5 and probably Mo Mozilla 1, you know, like, like pre-Firefox Mozilla. There was another thing then. Um, and I, I wrote tests and, uh, and, uh, and um, I made it so that it kind of, when it's ahead, it values its pieces less. So it's it just kind of like you're... Um, and it assumes you're playing the same way, so that when it's ahead, it's kind of more keen to swap stuff. You know, it'll, if, if it's way ahead, it'll swap its rook for your bishop and stuff like that because um, 
it makes the game more interesting if you've got a chance. Um, it, actually, it doesn't really work like that, but it, it kind of plays in a crazy way and still wins. Um, and and it, it's kind of, it's kind of counterintuitive. I mean, it's not the right move for a really small JavaScript chess engine because um, the best way for this kind of thing to w work is to keep the game complex and not swap away pieces. Because um, when you get to the end game, like you you might if you get to an end game, you win. So it tries to win before the end game. That's its, that's its end game strategy. Um, so it uses a, um, a 10 by 12 um, board, which is just kind of laid out in one big long flat array. Um, so the <coughs> now the board is like this, like like the, these 10 pieces here, 10, 10 across there, and now these wall ones here. The point of those is that when you're sliding your sliding things across, um, when you hit the wall, you stop. And the reason these two at the at the top and the bottom, and actually are kind of redundant walls on either side, is um, when you're at night, and there you like you're jumping on these these are the uh, kind of your offsets in the one-dimensional array. If you jump back. Jump 21 out. Oh, I think it should be negative 21. I don't know, but you, you like you can't you 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 hit the wall even if you're a knight in the corner, which is not where the knight wants to be. But um, so this this format um, is it turns out it's very common. Um, It's maybe not optimal, but it works well enough. And the, these um, values that the pieces have, there's kind of like a bit pattern to them. So when you're trying to work out whether um, the code can go, like if the piece and nine, which is like looking at that bit and that, that no, it should be and ten. Sorry. Um, Look at if you want to look at those two columns, if it equals eight, that means that it can slide diagonally. It's a queen or a bishop. Yeah. So you like like you, you by having the um the bits and y and your character codes kind of encode moves, you can kind of save work. Um, and I'll just get onto the the search part of it. A minimax search is you kind of want to you want to find the best move um, that you can make, um, but you have to find that the best move that you ma can make has to take into account the best move that all you, your opponent can make can make. So you have to in your search algorithm you have to be swapping sides all the way down. Um, and one way of doing an optimized way of doing that is called alpha beta. Um, okay, so I'll talk about these nodes. So that at the top, you don't really care about the. Okay, no, let's start at the bottom. So at some depth, way down, I've only got this many, but way down, you 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 say you, you kind of. Say this is where I am. I evaluate it. This is the score. This is with three. That's with one, and with that. Um, and you want the. You want to find get to the best place you can. Um, so th this one only cares about which of the moves. It wants to make. It wants to get another index, which has the highest score, and these ones. They want to choose the one that's got the lowest score because they don't want you to win. That, that's, your, that's your enemy. And then on this one, you're trying to pick, pick the highest score again. And so you do the depth first. Oh, so 
if you just follow it up, so that like the the best of these would be three, and and five is better than three, but this one wants the lowest, so it picks the three, and then um, but you want the highest, so you pick the other end. Um, is it, am I going too fast or confusingly? I don't. I always get confused when I'm talking about this. Um, but yeah, it's the kind of thing once you only need to write once, and then you only need to think about it every now and then. Um, so you go, you go down. You know your um, depth first, and you kind of come to here, and you say, "Oh, that's a three. And then you go, you get a one. So you're wanting, you're wanting the highest one of these. So you, you, you don't need to worry about the one. And then you go up, and then you come down here. And you say there's a four. Now, so that one, ev whatever these ones are, if that one was four, then you know that this one isn't going to pick the four because it's going to pick the three. So wha as soon as you see the four, you don't need to look at these. And so you kind of you put the four in there and tip out the five, and you you don't even look down these branches. Now, in a real search, um, there are like you know, 30 um, and what's the ch children of each node. And um, you, you actually, you might save a lot by doing that. And you especially save a lot if you make your, if you can make, the branch that you're going to take, your your um, like left hand side, um, then you save a whole lot more because you you can't you kind of want um, if you, if you do it the other way around if you search the worst ones first, you will search everything and you get come to the best one. If you come to the start of the best one, it's not so hard to chuck the you chuck out more, and it makes a huge difference. Um, except finding the best one is, of course, the whole point. So um, you, d you can't really do it beforehand, but if you have heuristics to make it, um, to have a good guess of what's going to work, um, then you go faster and, and then you go better. And that's what chess programming is all about. And, and this doesn't do much of that. Um, so the evaluation that um that I do. Um it, it just like each of these moves is taking something or moving a thing around. When it takes something it just kinda keeps score of the material that's been swa switched around. And um and then it, when it moves a piece, if it moves it into a better position, according to some really simple rules, um it kinda counts as a little bit of score. And so it kind of, as it's doing its search, it decides whether, well, yeah, it, each change it does um, changes the score of that that branch. And then when it gets to the leaf, it just kind of says, well, the score is this and goes back again. Um, so it, here's an example of the, um, it's called the, I think they call it a piece board table or something. Um, or I found out that all the things I did have got um, proper names in chess programming language, but I've forgotten them all again. Um, so, at the beginning of the game, um, the knights, they're just, they're just encouraged to get this this kind of bluish colour is like the worst colour that, that they hate the most, and they like to be in the the kind of brownie, orangey, ochery colour, and you know it's like a heat heat map that encouraged to go in there, and anything that moves um, from here to here would be a really good move, but the pawns have got their own encouragement to go that way, and all of it is a bit randomised at the beginning, so it, it's just kind of like. Encouragement to get your pieces out, and then they get your pieces out, and then the the um, knight is still discouraged from going into the corners and along the edge, 
but it's kind of like it wants to hang around the the Black King because you know what else is it doing? Um, and then it kind of keeps on like that, and it sort of gets stronger. Like the, the attraction of that area is um, gets gets stronger and stronger. So it's a bit late by then. Um, I can sh actually show you. Oh no, that's not the one. That one. Um, so it's got like that. This is like one my my testing page. Um, so like, see, this is the this is the um, initial pawn. There's some randomness in the the pawn weightings at the beginning, and that that kind of um, is how that's the only thing randomness in the initialization of the pawn weights and everything else is deterministic after that so it won't always do the same move and then if I kind of put them both onto computer players you can kind of see that the weights changed it, it finished um, and um I'll just put it onto the slow speed because it's the only speed at which you can now actually see with delay in here is actually um drawing delay. But on the slower speed you can actually see a little bit of the actual time that it takes to make a move. Um Yeah, so it never claims a draw, it offers a draw. But, it, it, you know, it's being friendly. It offers you undo, it offers you a draw. It's only a computer, it's not meant to um, be mean to you. Uh, um, except when you play, when it's playing by itself, it will go on forever. Um, I, I was trying to turn that off. The whole thing, really, is this function I called tree climber. Um, that was my word before I shrank that function name down to one character and then I expanded it back to tree climber. It's just been recursive search. Like um, and, it, and it does this parse thing to find the list of pseudo legal moves which means all the moves you can do um, including the ones that actually leave you unchecked after you've made them which aren't proper legal moves but it's always quicker to find the pseudo legal moves first um, and then for all the moves it makes the move using the, using that board and then does the tree climber on the other side just negates the score goes on then it unmakes the move and then and, and it with a counter until it gets to like you know eight levels deep or whatever you ask it for Spelling mistakes. So, anyway, so this year, so that 2012 version was going fine. It still is. Um, they've been. I've fixed a few bugs over the years. Um, as there's been, you know, people open an issue with some weird position where something doesn't work right, and I fix it, and then um, they add their problem into the test suite, and that kind of stopped getting new things about 2015. And um, but I, I thought I'd rewrite it. It's part of it in WASM, um, WebAssembly, um, because I actually have an interest in. I've, I've been working on this thing I call a one-bit neural network, which is um, another whole topic that I won't even go into. Um, assembly. I remember from the old days it used to be fun. Um, and easy, <laughs> um, but to make to 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 use WebAssembly, I kind of need to make. So I thought I'd use WebAssembly on the parse function, which uh, is when you look in, in some kind of profiler, it tells you that's where all the time is being spent. Um, um, to make the parts function work for web WebAssembly, you kind of need, I needed to make it not deal so much in um, JavaScript structures. 
So the, the version 2, that's the 2012 one, it, it kind of returned an array of, um, had a score and then a sub position and end position. And the reason it's in that order, it, 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 an array of these little lists, or a list of lists actually is what you could really say, isn't it? Um, and then you could sort that list and it'd be sorted by score, you see, and that was useful. Um, but that has to allocate and kind of fill out these little lists, sublists, and it will create objects and it has to append it to the end of the thing. And I thought, well, that, well, that is, not only is it impossible in WASM, as far as I know, it's, um, well, it's hard. It, it's obviously, even in JavaScript, it's a whole lot of work that you don't want to do. So then I thought, I'll um, change it. And so rather than having um, this, this score, start, end thing, if I pack all of that into a um, unsigned int, so this it's kind of written backwards. The score is shifted over. Now remember that there's these things that they start and end uh, indexes into that um, array of 120. So seven bits is, is enough. They're 128. Um, so if you, if you pack all of them into an integer, and then it can still sort the score is going across to the most significant part, you still sort the same way. I don't even know if that was useful, but I, I, I mean that sorting thing, but I can't remember now, but that's what how it went. So, and, that, and then um, rather than having the, the um, parse function having to you know, make this list, you give it a list which is long enough to take any number of moves, which the most moves in any chess position is 212. Um, that happy were found, they can't prove it. Then that's the most. So I give it a, you know, like 256 because that's the kind of number you give it, um, and it's going to be more than enough. And um, that that should make all, make it all faster, and it turns out it does. So um, it's best to look at the eight ply search. That um, this is this is the one getting ready for for WebAssembly. This is the one that was kind of optimized before that, and then I didn't have an eight ply at that point. But um, well, but in those two months, I was just kind of optimizing it for 2012 browsers, and so. From here, it's between two and three times faster. Um, that's the whole search. That's not just the the pars. So the pars is m at least this much faster. Um, I don't I don't actually know how much the rest of it matters. Anyway, so then I started looking at WebAssembly, which is not actually assembly, because um, assembly is a text representation of you know bit patterns on the in memory um, it's not as n whereas WebAssembly is the bytecode and and real assembly is not the bytecode um, and in fact the assembly that WebAssembly uses is called WAT <laughs> and it, you, it's got this syntax which you can um, so the virtual machine is kind of like a stack. It's an endless stack, which is, is not. A, people talk about every now and then. You see a news story about someone's going to make a WebAssembly CPU, and they never finish because you can't because it's actually a. Um, it's not really a real real machine. It, it, it's kind of got no bottom. Whereas when you're doing real assembly, you've got like a. Um, like a you know a series of pigeonholes where you can put your number there and your number there and your number there, and you ne never lose track of them, or you m you might, but you've only got sixteen things to think about. Uh, WebAssembly, you've got this bottomless pit. Um, but anyway, it's got this S expression kind of syntax, which kind of seems nice. So I kind of I went through, 
um, tried to do the bits I needed to do. And then I got further and further and further and further. And like the amount of JavaScript that I'd replaced by this was probably like that much. <laughs> and I got further and further and further and further. And then I kind of got, oh, I need to do more. And then I thought, uh, I don't like this. <laughs> and and we're, we're assembly is fun, but WebAssembly isn't. Um, and 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 look, like the because you d you d you have you're leaving things on a stack, and you want to leave them in a certain place, and then come back and pick them up. But there's nothing to tell you where that place is. Whereas when you're you know when you're putting in something with well, real assembly, you have a register, you say you put in an AX, or you put in BX, and you, you know AX or BX, you go and look there. But you've got to kind of count, and nothing's counting for you, and it's got this thing. This T, like you can set something with local dot set, um, or you can, if you do the same thing with local dot T, it also sets it, and but also leaves a copy on the stack or so, something like that. So you you, and the S expressions are nice when you're not using T because you know when you finished your parenthesis that you've left if you've come back to where you were, you go, Ooh, and you come back. If you, as soon as you put a T in there, you don't know. You don't. You know that you've left something, but you don't. You lose track. I lose track. And then I thought, um, oh, I talked about this stuff. I switched to writing it in C, because I know C. I'm, I'm a C programmer by trade, sort of. Um, and I, but I didn't want to use um, this thing called mscripten, which is like a huge monolith for writing. C programs on JavaScript, which you know, it, it, like it would make it, it would make the thing from being 5k to 5 gig kind of thing. Um, so there is a way you can just do that. Anyway, so here's the JavaScript. One of the JavaScript. There were two functions I needed to change. This one just as it gives you a. It's just checking whether you. Um, you can castle, basically, at any point. So, um, and it goes through, and it kind of looks the way, you know, is there a bishop or a brook or anywhere in the wrong place, putting you in check. And and this is the C function of the same thing. So there you can see there's a bit of a, um, C has got types here, types here. Um, I go. Oh no, that's not what I want. Okay, we'll go, oh, let, let's look at the bottom of them because that. So that's the JavaScript, and that's the C. Um, you can see. I, I let's go to say that point. There is another change in there somewhere. What's it about there? Okay, there's the not changes in there. Let's go up. Ah, oh, here we go. Uh, so, in JavaScript, I had let delta. And C, I had to give it a type. So, anyway, I chose, after this experiment, I chose to use C as my uh, approach to, to WebAssembly rather than um, that S expression stuff because I already had it. Oh, and, I, and so I had to make an allocator. I didn't have to make an allocator, I chose to. Um, so, yeah. If you if you're not using the C standard library in mscript and all that, you don't have malloc, so you can't allocate memory. Um, but you do have this magic kind of um, um, pointer to a part of memory where the compiler is saying, "I'm not using anything after this," which is the compiler is only using a few bytes really for th 
for things like this magic pointer. And um, this one, which is, is declared as a global, also goes in there. And then so the, al the allocation function, I didn't call it malloc because there's no free. It just, um, the memory is pointing to the heap base and then it just kind of um, returns you the, the top of memory, the top of used memory and a adds enough to it so that it rounds it to a nice number. And then there's a, um, rather than free, there's a, let's just free the whole lot function, like wipe it. Um, and then actually, I found that um, I could actually use less code in C than in JavaScript because I could re because there's this repetitive thing that I had to do of making a move where you're um, shifting stuff about, and it was a pain to have to write lots of times, even though I'd already written it. But I could just make the so this is a, a diff. I don't know why it's gone those colours. Um, I'm using reveal.js, that's why. Um, so th this macro, I can just replace all these bits that are doing that kind of thing with the move. And um, it makes the, the, Java, the C function shorter and clearer than the JavaScript, which is nice. And the, comp the, um, the make file kind of has to do this. I allocate a bit of memory for it. It doesn't actually need, like, where some you have to allocate in uh, multiples of 64k. Um, it only needs one, except in some of my tests, I have a test where it's making lots of lots of um, chess things on the same page, and that that breaks if I only have it doing one. So, and then the um, Using this that pars function that has been rewritten in um, in C for WebAssembly, it's about twice as fast as the previous one, which is already two or three times as fast as the one before, which is faster than it was in May 2012. Not really faster than July. Um, and and Chromium is even faster. Unfortunately, because I don't really use it, but um, and I, I don't I like th this is about when I added the um, benchmark, so I don't know how it would compare to the old old version, but I know it's faster because I added the benchmark because I was already optimizing it. Um, now, th the problem I've got at the moment, this is why I stopped. I stopped about a few months ago. Um, because the WebAssembly, you have to load it asynchronously. Yeah, you have to load it. You can't, can't load it from a, a file URL. You have to load it with a, you know, set out of a little browser. Um, I mean, server. And and the version two, the 2012 version, it, the API is all synchronous. You know, it's just like turn this thing into a chess game, and and um, it will happen. And the and the where's some one that has to be in the future. Sometime turn this into a web game, and hopefully no one will start trying to play before y you're finished. And 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 y there's you know just a whole lot of nuisance. Um, and I and I thought, oh, I should think about that, and then uh, it was too hard. <laughs> um, so I'm not. Uh, I will get onto it again. Um, I I mean I think. I think there's a version three that I can just release straight away and say that's the same as the old one. Everything works the same. It's just two or three times faster. V version four, is um. going to be incompatible and then because the the that pars function is the only and the check check casting function which is like a sub part of it is the other only parts of um the tree climber thing that i 
rewrote in Wasm, I think I'll do more of it. Um, and then there's the back to my one bit neural network. Um, and there's another way. So in, in JavaScript, you, you don't have a 64 bit integer. You just can't. Everything, every number in JavaScript is a, is a floating point. Um, if you've got a 64 bit integer, you can map those onto the 64 bits of the board. And there are ways that you can make everything smoother and faster. Um, you don't get the nice thing of when you slide off the edge at the wall. But um, there are other ways of doing that. And because the representation can be smaller, like it, you, you need more than one 64-bit um, integer because you'd have a, you need a few bits to indicate which piece it is and stuff. Um, but now, one of the slow things, I think, is using one board, you have to make the move, and then you have to unmake the move after you've checked it and, and we'll don't know what you're doing. Um, if you have a, say, five 64-bit numbers, you put them down, you, m you make your move and change them, and then on a kind of like on a stack, and then you just roll them back um, so that you don't, the unmaking move is just, forget that. It's not, um, it's not having to fiddle around and restore the on passant state and all this kind of stuff. It's like we're, we're done with that branch. Um, I haven't tried it, but I suspect that'll make it faster. And and that'll make it more, that representation will be more amenable to the one bit neural network. Ah, oh, this is one of my recent emails I got. This is like, this is like, whatever you do, you can't avoid the worst. Somebody has written to me, they offered nice, they, they reported a bug, um, and then they said, you know, you come to my website, you can be paid in Bitcoin to watch advertisements. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh well, how, yeah, whatever you do, you can't stop it being used for evil. <laughs> um, that's it.